Welcome to Rehash. On the internet, we're all news. It's old news. We bring you the best and worst of what happens today. What's up, guys? I'm Trey Kilo Goods, and you are watching Rehash. Thank you so much to Trey Kilo Goods, who provided our intro. If you want to be a BAM fly Kim, link in the description to where you can provide an intro, get a spotlight, and be shouted out, and all that good stuff like that. Yeah. We had a couple of newsy top whatevers that we wanted to discuss, and I figured today I was going to be a nice guy and let you go first. All right, are you, are you for sure I'm going to go first? Yes. All right, so for your family, I Too bad! I knew it. <laughs> Today I wanted to talk to you about eSports and how performance enhancing drugs are starting to make their way into eSports. Oh. Mm. And then you wanted to talk about? Well, I wanted to talk about 50 Cent filing for bankruptcy. So 50 Cent got 50 Cent. Exactly. All right. Or alternatively, 50 Cent ain't got a dime to his name. Ooh. <laughs> uh, we only worked on that one in rehearsal for like an hour. All right, and then, wait, that was your thing. Yeah. So, and then I wanted to talk to you about what this world is coming to when a man can't wear a skirt. Whoa. And then I wanted to talk to the Freedom Family about piracy done right. Nice. Yeah. So because I am indeed a very, very mean man, no, I'm actually going to let you have the first story. Oh. No interrupting. I'm just going to... Mm. No, 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 I need you to talk. I mean, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk to the Freedom Family about 50 Cent filing for bankruptcy. Okay. But, but he actually may not be bankrupt, though. Okay, so now there's a, a little bit of a misnomer. Like, some people think that bankruptcy means you, you don't have any money. Right. Um, it's actually just a legal term that pretty much means that you're basically getting away from, you know, debts and stuff. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's some, some again, legal stuff that goes on, but uh, it's really more of a formality with paperwork for rich people. Yeah. Now, for poor people, it does mean <laughs> we ain't got nothing. You're screwed. But for the most part, he's working his way around the system. In a short term, for those of you, that myself included, that really don't understand the system, uh, he has a fine. It can either be 10 to $15 million, okay. or it can be $5 million. So he's taking the easy route, and he's paying $5 million. You know... It, it, as a person who doesn't have a whole heck of a lot in his life, this sickens me just a little bit. Yeah. Knowing that, you know, first off, I'm sure that whatever 50 Cent owns, he doesn't actually probably own. He probably some company that, you know, that he's set up, some corporation, you know, on paper owns everything. So he can very easily do this. Um, and, and that really makes me mad. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people get away with it too. Um, and I don't think that's fair. I mean, I, I don't like the system being played like that. It is every day though. But you know what else isn't fair? Oh. Performance enhancing drugs. Now, this is eSports that I'm talking about. If we were talking about real sports, people would be using, um, you know, they would be taking drug tests and, you know, and whatnot. But this is eSports and like it or not, the majority of people don't take esports seriously yet. However, after this news, where esport players are starting to admit that they're on Adderall during competitions, we might actually see where these people are going to start being drug tested. Right. Um, and of course, that is speculation on my part, but it's just one of those things that I see coming down the pipeline. Um, for those of you who are not aware, Adderall is a drug that is used um, usually uh, for people who have um, uh, attention deficit disorder. Um, and in people who don't have attention deficit disorder, it can cause a lot of health issues, but it also gives you like hyper focus yeah. and, um, and, and whatnot almost to a zombie-like state. Yeah. Um, okay. I, I do, in fact, suffer from attention deficit disorder, and I was on it for a very short time, and it yeah, it's not a fun thing, even for those of us who suffer. Yeah. All right, um, but yeah, anyway, moving on. Um, I, it's, it's one of those things where now that we have people coming out and talking about it, uh, we might actually see a little bit more of a, an even playing field once the officials start wising up. Yeah, anything to say? No, I mean, I agree 100%. I know, like, the Call of Duty scene, I'm not going to say, you know, specific names, but I do know that uh, there's a few professional players within that community that actually do take out a role and they compete. Uh, and they've been exposed multiple times. So, um, I think drug testing is the easiest thing. I don't know why they haven't done it yet. That's just my thoughts. Uh, all right. 
And then you had a thing you Yeah, I want to talk about piracy done right. Piracy done right. Now, how exactly do you do piracy yeah, right? Okay, I'll, I'll get into it. But for those of you that don't know, Game Dev Kaikun is a, a game development company simulator. Like, you, you, you create your own little video games. Of course, you don't code it. But you have your own little company. You build your company Wait, up. Yeah. Is this by chance the thing that we were teasing a while back when we asked people if they wanted to make their own games? No. No. no, no nothing close. Not, nothing close. Nowhere near. No. Okay. It's actually pretty good. All right. So for the most part, you know, when they released their game, something they did differently was they made a separate version of the game it was a cracked version. But what they did is they actually went into the code of the game and they made it to where for those of, you know, uh, anybody who, you know, pirated the game, they set it up to where it was inevitable that your company would fail. Okay. And periodically throughout the game, they would say, we're sorry, boss. You know, if we keep it up like this, we're either going to go bankrupt now or very, very soon. And then they would, like, take screenshots. The game development company, the actual people who made Game Dev Tycoon, they would go and, like, take screenshots of the people who were complaining. Like, oh, my God, I, I put so much work and effort into this video. I bought the game, and my company keeps failing. Uh, it, it was just a, it was just a cool little nifty thing that they did for the the project. <clears throat> so I, I I agree with this, um, and I think it does kind of uh, kind of drive home a lesson. And I'm I'm glad that they were able to do this in this way, um, in that you know if your game if you're if you pirate a game about game development and your company keeps um, failing due to piracy, I think that's a, a really good you know side lesson. But before we do wrap it up, I, I wanted to show you guys the graph. The graph does show that a lot of people have power to the game, but, you know, very similar to Minecraft. You know what I'm going with that? Now, yes. Minecraft, oh. um, Notch, uh, creator of Minecraft, let piracy go on for, like, forever. In fact, yeah. he even released a tweet saying, Yeah, sure, if you can't buy the game, pirate it. And myself included actually started with the pirated version of the game yeah. and then later moved on to... Um, to uh, buying the game. In fact, I think I own like three accounts. <laughs> right. um, however, the thing is, the way that Minecraft handled that is, uh, they the people who have the pirated game can only join servers that allow it. Most servers don't because it's a security risk. And um, you know, it also you know the launchers changed over the years and, and whatnot. And it's a lot harder to just pirate the game nowadays. So it's actually more convenient to buy for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but yeah. All right, then you got a news type, whatever. I did. What is this world coming to? Oh. When a man cannot wear a kilt. Apparently, there is a group of bar men who has recently decided that they're going to evaluate whether or not they should be wearing kilts on the job because they're being groped by women. I don't think I'm in the right line of work. Would you wear a kilt if you got groped? Yeah, of course. No matter who was groping you. <laughs> Alright, I retract what I said. <laughs> I have a very deep respect for people who wear um, non-traditional clothing for traditional reasons, like kilts. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't get it. It's it's just one of those things that I have a lot of respect for for men who can pull off. Yeah, they embrace their culture. So, uh, women out there, stop groping men in kilts. Now we get to talk about that thing we didn't do yesterday. The comments. The comments. Let's go. Comment number one comes from Blind G, who says, plus Anthony Smith, thank you so much. We have officially concluded our charity and are happy to report that they have raised over $3,000 for Child's Play. For those of you who are unaware, on Friday we did an all call for people doing anything for Child's Play to let us know how their things were going in the comments below. Uh, again, I'd like to extend the same thing. If you're doing something for Child's Play, let us know in the comment section down below how much have you raised, where are you going to be streaming, where can we find you? Yeah. Comment number two, which is still pretty cool, comes from Loyal Music. He says, how does freedom help a music channel like me? And what is Position Music? I mean, that. what are the benefits of using Position Music? Well, for starters, we have exclusive deals with more than just one music label. They offer a variety of premium you know, tracks, sound effects, and more, all of which for you guys to use for free. I mean, these are just some of the benefits that you guys can get. Review sponsorships, 
I, I mean, we, we promote the partners in some of the videos, we feature your comments. I mean, we're doing everything. So I'm going to tackle this question from specifically how, if I were a music channel, yeah. I would use this. Go ahead. Um, depending on what kind of music channel you are, here's what this allows you to do. Now we have position music, we have fixed music, we have epidemic sound, we have too many. We have we have too many for yeah. me to think of at the moment. But they're all good though. They're and awesome. we also have Beat, which is our in-house record label. Um, so how I would take uh, advantage of freedom if I were a music channel is I would uh, look at. Uh, uploading and or creating derivative works from the things on Position Music, Epidemic Sound, um, Audio Micro, and the rest. Yeah. I would look at um, at utilizing uh, Beat, our in-house record label, to see if I can get my stuff distribute, uh, distri distributed. Dis yeah, distributed. <laughs> distributed. That's awesome. Um, I would also work within the Freedom community to find YouTube um, uh, content creators in the Freedom family to utilize the music I was creating in their videos. Um, I would also... Uh, the, the list go, just goes on. How do we help you? We help provide a community so that you can help find people that are going to use your music, maybe on a regular basis. Um, we help promote you through our in-house record label, Beat. Uh, we um, we go as far as we possibly can, especially for music creators, especially for graphic designers, especially for you know um, these people who provide these w wonderfully helpful services. Um, and for non-music channels, just basically take what I said and tweak it to whatever it is you do. Yeah. All right. Way in depth than I did. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, and I wanted to talk about this comment here. Comment number three! Oh. Number three! Three! Uh, <laughs> from Wolf 52 who says, Yo, Zach and Anthony, yet another amazing and captivating show. Yeah, thank you. I like longer episodes, though. P.S. Mind telling me what you think about my channel? Um, okay, so some people like the longer stuff. Some people like the shorter stuff. We're actually trying to do a mix of both. To keep everybody happy. Yeah. Um, there's an old saying saying you can make some of the people happy some of the time, all the people happy some of the time, some of the people happy all the time, but you can't make all the people happy all the time. That's a mouthful. Yeah, see, I've never heard that before. Yeah. So, and, and of course, we know that some days some people are going to walk away feeling, you know, cheated or they're just going to leave the video early. We know. We're working on it. Um, we did have this one idea where we were going to open up a second channel and do kind of extra content over there. However, I'll be honest with you, we're spending... Uh, actually too much time on this show right now um so that may be something that gets put off to a later time or date mm, don't know but anyways um that's a discussion for another day because anything i say i don't want anybody holding me to anything right so anyways um working on it bro as far as what we think about your channel to be honest with you um this comment was farmed a couple of hours ago and i don't have the ability to click through and check it out right now otherwise i would but now we have somebody who we have checked out their channel. Oh, let's go. Segways, segways. The partners. Trey Kilo Goods. I see that you're having some issues with identity. And I'm not necessarily talking about personal identity. I'm talking about channel identity. Your branding is inconsistent. Um, you are, it looks like you've got some good things going on. Some of your thumbnails I really like. Um, they convey emotion. Uh, they, you know, they show action moments in, uh, whatever games it is you're playing or whatever it is you're doing. Um, however, to be honest with you, it, your, your thumbnails, your art, it doesn't mesh, man. Um, and that may sound like a horrible... You know, it may sound like horrible news. No, no, But no, I can no, say no. this. You have personality. Um, you've you've got to get your branding on lockdown. And, of course, I'm, I'm going to cut this bit short because I always say this. More text in your description! <laughs> if I can say anything, it's just finding the right foundation for your channel. I know when I first started creating videos, it took me, like four or five months to even get like 50 subscribers. And it's just because I did not know what I was going to do. One day I would upload uh, exploits, one day I would upload Grand Theft Auto, then Let's Plays. I couldn't find the foundation of what I wanted to do. But if I could suggest anything, 
Find something relevant and something that you enjoy doing. And then as for the thumbnails, that's just something you're going to improve on in time. If I could suggest anything with the current thumbnails you have, just don't use white text. For the most part, it's kind of difficult to see with the white background or the white, what are the, the, the sides of you? Like light blue yeah. and, and uh, white's a really hard color to work yeah. with when it comes to text. Um, and as far as everything else, just try to find a consistent style. You'll notice that uh, using rehashes as, as an example, none of our thumbnails <laughs> look extremely similar to the one previous. But um, a few things that we always try to do, uh, we try to make sure that people can make out faces. Uh, we try to make sure that uh, if we use text, it's very, very little or it's complementary. Um, try not to explain everything. Um, for example, you've got one, uh, Call of Duty 1 in the chamber. You could probably communicate that better visually if you, you know, took a little while. Now you might spend, you know, 20 or 30 minutes on a thumbnail, but that's okay. Because it's worth it in the end, like with one in the chamber, put like one bullet and then a gun. I mean, it, it kind of conveys the message pretty easily. Exactly. Yeah. All right, uh, I believe that that pretty much wraps things up. Um, now, oh, uh, seems like we might have been a little bit critical. To be honest with you, like I said, your personality, you have it. Um, it's just, you know, branding-wise, identity-wise, I think you just need to find some time to, to find yourself. And as far as branding-wise, when you do find yourself, make sure that you go back and you update all of your old thumbnails. Believe me, you'll thank me. All right. Um, so I guess it's time for us to sign off. Sadly. Sadly. Let us know in the comment section down below if you never want rehash to end. Hashtag w. Also, give us ideas for our 100th episode, which is coming up fairly soon. Is we're, it really? Are we're already soon? up to like, this is what, number 27? Wow. 28? Something like is that? Is it really? I, I don't know. Really keep track. All right. Well, let us know what you want us to do for, um, for number 100. Anyways, till next time, don't forget to like, subscribe, and do all those things that make us love our jobs. Also, be awesome to yourself and amazing oh. to each other. See you guys later. Bye, friend and family.